Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to welcome you back again. Hope you are well fit after the lunch break and uh, feel good. Uh, it is my pleasure to announce the beginning of our next session. And I do believe you'll be surprised. The focus of the session is large language models, information retrieval, and natural language processing. This is an overwhelming majority. I mean, topically, uh, the papers within this scope is, uh, form the overwhelming majority for our today's master symposium, based on the hype and boost of the technologies related to large language models and around. So, it is my pleasure to announce that the first speaker uh, scheduled in the section is Irina Postohova, uh, who should have spoken on uh, meaning change detection. But unfortunately, we've got a message that Irina has got ill and uh, has no voice to speak, and therefore she apologized for not attending and not speaking today. Is that correct? No updates? Okay. So therefore, we'll just proceed to, uh, to our second speaker, who is Alexander Rashtuk. Yeah, please, please share your presentation, Alexander. <clears throat> yeah, sure. Do you have the mic? Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah, I have the mic and it's yeah, working. it's working. It's on now. Yeah. Cool. So the topic <clears throat> of Alexander's talk today is finding and adding facts in model modern LLM architectures. Okay. So okay. hacking into yeah, thanks LLMs. Thanks. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, this work is performed in collaboration by, with uh, Alberto Bietti and Nazari Drushak, who were, as far as I understand, the co-advisors for this work. So, Alexander, the floor is yours. Please go ahead with your, with your presentation. Yeah, thanks for the introduction. Happy to open this working session. Thanks for joining. So, my name is Alexander Washuk, and I will be presenting funding and editing uh, facts in modern LLM architectures. So this work is advised by Alberto Bietti from Flatiron Institute, Simons Foundation, and Nazari Dershak from Applied Sciences Faculty. Nazari is not only my student colleague, but also a mentor for this work. So the plan for the presentation is next. We will discuss the motivation uh, related work. We will also review the research gaps and research questions. I will uh, describe the planet approach to solution and our early results and future work. So. Let's start. This is formal problem statement. 
so model nowadays models nowadays become bigger and costs for their training and fine tuning rise. The output is not always factually correct and we still must verify it. To tackle this problem, we need to have efficient methods that can edit facts in LLM. We also need better understanding of factual recall mechanisms to improve trustworthiness and reliability of the models. So let's review those two statements. Uh, recently, Sam Altman stated that uh, GPT-4 training cost is more than 100 million of dollars. This is pretty a big amount of money. And if the technology will evolve in this extensive manner, the cost will definitely rise. Another interesting story is from Australia. Uh, there, ChatGPT falsely told voters that their mayor, mayor was jailed for the bribery. That didn't help the elections, though. But we have those inconsistencies all over the, all over the place. And the causes there are different, but the result is the same. Uh, those inconsistencies are really expensive to handle and change in the uh, large language models with existing fine-tuning methods. Here is the McKinsey and Company research uh, released in August 25, 2020, 2023. You can see a lot of models that were released last year. And even in this year, last months, we have a couple of major releases. We have the Gemini, Claude 3, we have Devin and other models. So we are constantly releasing them, but the problem remains uh, with editing facts. So do you trust model? output. Um, if it's not an obvious hallucination and like do you review the facts that are used for the output generation? Probably as a, as a people who are familiar with the technology you are, you are checking the facts that are used in the output. But can you actually explain the knowledge retrieval mechanisms behind the generated output? Maybe some parts yes, but other parts are still a mystery for us. So, sorry about that. So to summarize, we still have to have effective fact editing methods for the models to uh, do that without the overhead of uh, fine tuning. And also we have to um, improve our knowledge in retrieval mechanisms to ensure that we can trust models and we know how to explain their generated output. So let's dive into the related work. So before we begin with uh, facts editing uh, methods, I want to share with you how the facts uh, are stored and located. So recent studies show that MLPs in early layers are the key value memories, uh, st key value memory storages. And multi-head self-attention blocks work as a knowledge retrieval mechanisms. But how did they actually found that? So here on the figure, you can see the description about the causal tracing uh, method. So what they are doing there, they are noising the input that is um, given to the model. It forces model to lose the information about the subject um, in that context. And, that, and then using the clear run uh, with not noised input, interventing the inner states of the model, they are re re they are um, they are refreshing the inner states uh, with those, those uncorrupted uh, states and uh, uh, checking what the layers are most important on the um, like um, gen generation of the uh, un 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 um, Unnoised uh, output. So on the on the top uh, part of the figure, you can see how this is performed, and the bottom part of the figure, you see the results. So you can see the uh, important layers for the MLPs and the important layers for the attention blocks. So if you are interested, uh, please check the reference paper because this explanation is very like um, is very simple. Let's talk about fact editing methods. So uh, the first one and the most simple is the Romy. So it performs edit of one fact at the time and change the most important layer uh, MLP weights. 
So how, how it is done? They are calculating the vector which represents the subject and also the vector that represents the attribute that should be updated or inserted into those MLP weights. Then using those two vectors, they are updating the matrix, um, solving the least squares problem. MAMIT method is based on the ROMI and specifically designed to modify more than one fact at the time. It uses the same technique as ROMI, but it changes the set of important layers and <coughs> uh, distributing, distributing this change uh, to them. PMAT is based on the MAMIT and it improves the editing technique by adding the edit for the multi-head uh, multi self-attention block for the target layer. You can see the results in the, in the table. So this table is taken from the PMAT uh, paper, you can check it. Uh, but uh, take a look on the generalization and specificity column. So generalization states, states for uh, the share of the paraphrased prompts that should generate the edited knowledge. And you can see the score is high. So the editing method really works. But specificity, it stands for the share of the neighborhood prompts that shouldn't be changed with that edit. And those values are not so high. So existing editing methods, they succeed to uh, edit the fact, but they are also screwing up a bit the overall model knowledge. So knowing about those editing methods, uh, let's dive into the in-context learning. So what is the in-context learning? It is technique that is adding a statement which alters the fact in the context. For example, uh, the city of Paris is located in Italy. This statement alters the factual, like, like it alters the fact. And then this statement is followed by in which country the city of Paris is located in. And the model will generate Italy because you altered this fact in the context. So what are the methods? and mechanisms behind that. In this figure, you can see the overview for the competition between MLP and MH and uh, multi-head self-attention blocks. Uh, what is this competition stands for? So MLPs, they have the knowledge that Paris is located in France, but attention blocks, they actually have the knowledge from the context that Paris is located in Italy. And this competition happened uh, and is described in uh, those two figures. So on the y-axis, we have uh, a delta between logics for the contrafact and fact. And on the x-axis, we have the layers of the model. And you can see here that attention blocks, they contribute more to uh, promote the contrafactual token to be generated. I would say even more, they are not only contributing more. There are also a lot of specific tasks learned by the attention heads to, um, to do this factual recall to generate the, uh, the output. So those are called like name mover heads, S inhibition heads, induction heads, etc. If you are interested in, there is also a reference paper to read more about those uh, tasks. But the interesting thing there is that they also have they also are duplicated. So when one attention head fails with their role, there are duplicates to stand up and do the actual job. And I bet that many more are yet encountered in that uh, large language models. So having that uh, overview for the related work, um, the research gaps, gaps are the following. So existing fact editing methods work with unidirectional facts and were tested on small architectures. We want to ensure the generality that they, those methods could, could be applied to the modern architectures like LAMA2, and we want to measure it, the, the efficiency of those methods. Only PMAT is adding updates to the multi-head self-attention blocks, and it is added without the considering of the factual recall mechanisms existing there. So there is a room for improvement to uh, include those uh, learn tasks by um, attention heads for the editing methods to improve their efficiency. Our research questions are next. So how the efficient uh, ROMI application to LAMA2 will be? 
and how it compares to the GPT-2 and GPG, GPT-J applications. What role multi-head self-attention plays in factual recall? Which mechanisms allow attention heads to identify those relations, facts, and modifiers that change model behavior in context? And how editing techniques like byte editing, Romy, and other methods, and fine tuning and prompting, uh, specifically in context learning, differ in efficiency. For our work, we will use existing datasets. Those are two, uh, the SRE and Contrafact. So they consist uh, from the uh, fact changing uh, statement, also paraphrased prompts to uh, assess the generalization and uh, neighborhood prompts that should not uh, be changed in the output generation to uh, assess the specificity. We also want to um, enrich the existing counterfact data set with uh, our uh, in-context editing examples and also with mass examples uh, with in-context learning that alters basic number operations. Uh, so the statement is next. Uh, we want to investigate factual recall mechanisms used for the in-context learning. So uh, specifically attention heads, recall mechanisms, competition between MLPs and uh, multi-head self-attention blocks, and the impact of in-weight fact editing on those recall mechanisms. We also want to apply Romy method for the LAMA2 to measure its efficiency. In our experiments, we will be using the causal tracing instrument that I mentioned earlier, also logit lens that will be explained uh, later, and attention map instrument to understand the data flow and recall mechanisms for the in-context learning approach. Uh, also to understand the recall mechanisms behind the modifiers which alter model, model behavior. In other words, the, if you add the statement, ignore the previous context, for the, this altering, fact altering statement in the in-context learning, the model will generate actual fact. And also we want to compare recall mechanisms for in-context and in-weight fact editing. For those we will use uh, next two libraries. This is a Romy repository released by Biolab and also Transformer Lens, which developed by Neil Nanda and all those uh, libraries they have uh, implemented uh, those instruments. To evaluate our experiments, we will use the contrafact data set enriched with our examples and uh, use the set of the state of art, state of the art metrics that are uh, used to ev evaluate other editing uh, methods. And also we will compare the results of uh, causal tracing, logit lens and attention map instruments for our experiments. This is our early results. We conducted several experiments with in-context learning where we altered the uh, Romy location and altered that from Italy to, Bar to Barbland. We also noised the first Romy token to break this uh, in-context altering and, under and understand how those tokens are um, promoted uh, in the model for the generation and understand the important layers. So on the right, this linear graph on the y-axis has the uh, has the last position logit for those two tokens, Italy, which is factual, and Barbiland, which is counterfactual. And on the x-axis, you have the uh, layers of the model. You can see that uh, those tokens are pretty um, close one to another, but the factual token with noise at first Romy is promoted for the generation. We still don't know why those tokens are so close in logits. We are working on the attention map instrument to identify which attention heads contributed to this behavior. But two figures at the right, they show the important layers for the MLPs. This is the, in the middle one, uh, green. So you can see that for the first Romy token, the important layers are located at the beginning. And recent studies, they state that at this place, model retrieves the information about Romy as an entity. And for the attention, you can see that important layers that contribute the most for the restoring the output are located uh, near the, for the uh, second appearance of Romy. Here model actually 
builds this relation between first mention of Romy and second mention of Romy and relation to the attribute of Barbilan. You also can see that there are important layers for the attention at the last layers for the last token. Here, model actually uh, work on the generation of output based on the query that it locates in the context. So our future work, we have to develop enrichments for our data set and scale our experiments on that. We also need to investigate investigate mechanisms with attention map instrument that are behind the in-context learning and model behavior modifiers. And we have to evaluate, evaluate those experiment results and compare them. This is it from my side. Thanks for your time and attention. So I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you very much. I expect a lot of questions uh, to this very nice talk. Questions, please. Okay. Uh, I have just written one. Uh, you mentioned at the very beginning a term which is unidirectional fact. Mm -hmm. What does this mean? Please excuse my ignorance. Uh, so unidirectional facts, mm, they are constructed like uh, the president of Ukraine is Volodymyr Zelensky. This is the one direction fact. But when you will state that Volodymyr Zelensky is the president of the Ukraine, this is like the fact of opposite direction. And when you added uh, the unit, like when you added the fact, um, the statement that uh, the president of Ukraine is Volodymyr Zelensky, it's not always will uh, reflect in the updated generation output for the reverse effect. So this is the limitation of the method. So when you will state that Volodymyr Zelensky is the president of, the model will fail to generate the edited fact, but it will generate the edited fact for the statement like uh, the president of Ukraine is uh, Volodymyr Zelensky. No, still, no. Uh, when you revert no, the fact, then uh, you do that by injecting passive into the statement. Yes. Um, so why not? This is because of li of limitation of those uh, methods, and I ah, hypothesize that okay. uh, I hypothesize that the change is performed in MLPs, and it is pe performed in that way that there is building specific like specific key from the context mm. uh, that should result in a specific value yeah sure so so key value is unidirectional yeah. okay yeah okay thank you no questions no questions okay thank you very much probably i was too harsh from the from the after the dinner <laughs> okay, thanks yeah just excuse people there just after the lunch Okay. Our next speaker will be Natalia Volkova. And uh, her topic is computational detection and analysis of manipulation techniques in use channels on Telegram in Ukraine. Very important and uh, actual topic for today. So, Natalia, the work has been advised by uh, Oleksiy Ignatenko and uh, supported by Mantis Analytics. This is the company name, as far as I understand. Okay, enjoy the podium. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. I would like to introduce uh, our work, Computational Detection and Analysis of Manipulation Techniques in Use Channel on Telegram in Ukraine. Uh, the uh, the uh, structure of uh, my uh, uh, speech will be following. Uh, first of all, I introduce my motivation and uh, our uh, and research goal. Then uh, we examine with you uh, related work and uh, research gap analysis. After that, um, uh, I define the research problem and planned approach to solution, and um, uh, we discuss the early results and limitation. 
it is important to establish a clear understanding of the terminology uh, employed in our study. Uh, this information is false information spread deliber deliberately with the intention to mislead or deceive. It's uh, different pro from misinformation by its um, uh, uh, harmful intent and it uh, distinguished from more information by its uh, uh, falsehoodness. Uh, uh, fake news is the category within this disinformation uh, focused on um, news uh, um, uh, news content. Uh, when uh, fake news, uh, um, uh, when fan fake news uh, developed and uh, spread uh, with uh, a political agenda to uh, manipulate uh, the attitude and perception of people, it could be a form of propaganda. So fake news is a news article that is int intentionally false uh, by fact or uh, by perception. Um, the, uh, rapid, uh, uh, the broad dissemination of fake news poses a threat to individuals and society. Their um, uh, global impact have, uh, had been, um, had been uh, uh, evident in the 2016 US president election, U, uh, U, uh, UK Brexit, uh, Brexit referendum and uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, the uh, Russian war against uh, Ukraine underscores the urgency uh, of uh, um, uh, of find the tool to detect uh, fake news. Uh, uh, Ukrainians suffer from massive propaganda from Russia, uh, from pro uh, pro Russian channels spread uh, um, uh, partially true uh, information and uh, um, uh, and. Uh, 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 ideological narrative direct to user uh, 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 and caused uh, the um, doubt of Ukrainians' uh, uh, perspective of the reality. Uh, so our research goal is to develop an approach that can effectively detect fake news on social media. But before uh, we focused uh, uh, our research, we also need to understand the political foundation of fake news. Uh, based on the uh, Paul Christopher and Matthew uh, Miriam uh, research, uh, which uh, um, have uh, uh, researched their um, Russian contemporary uh, strategy, they um, showed that it is different from the previously existed approach uh, of uh, um, uh, autocratian regimes uh, when uh, uh, they uh, focused on uh, one ideologically view uh, situation, um, uh, they were consistent and um, uh, they uh, um, uh, um, and they avoid uh, contradictions. Russia contemporary information warfare uh, deliberately seeks to sow confusion, polarize uh, opinion, and instill distrust. Um, they abuse uh, social media weaknesses uh, when anonymous uh, um, ch uh, anonymous uh, um, author channel uh, could uh, spread um, uh, the dis disinformation and um, uh, and. Uh, um, use specific uh, and also it's uh, important that uh, uh, pro-Russian channels that does not always uh, present uh, false fact. Uh, they use uh, rather specific writing uh, techniques that raise uh, doub doubts and prejudgment in uh, the audience. So. Um, Therefore, considering everything above, our focus is not on the uh, verification of truthful, uh, truthfulness of the news, but rather focus on detecting uh, the linguistic techniques deliberately used to twist uh, the reader's perception and uh, mislead them. Um, Based on, on that, I would like uh, to um, uh, uh, to tell you about uh, related work on this style-based uh, approach. Uh, the interesting approach uh, um, could be uh, classified by level of uh, propaganda detection, the document level and uh, the span level. The document level were firstly introduced by uh, Rashkin et al. at 2017. Um, they uh, have classification tasks with four classes and created their own corpus with manual documented level annotation with news from newspaper in English. And the most uh, model at that time was LSTM. But the most prominent um, 
uh, approach is pan level um, uh, propaganda detection. Uh, the San Martio et al. in 2019, they ger gathered from the social uh, research, uh, research works, uh, they gathered 18 uh, classes um, of uh, 18 propaganda techniques, which could be identified um, in the text uh, without any additional information. And uh, they also, for this uh, task, created their own corpus with manual span level annotation uh, with uh, news from newspaper in English. Um, based on this approach and uh, corpus, uh, we were uh, several competition um, uh, the several competition was based on that, and uh, the best um, uh, models uh, was uh, Transformers, and still the Baird based uh, uh, model uh, is the uh, sort of for the propaganda technique detection uh, task. Uh, but it's interesting that in 2021, uh, Uetal uh, suggested that before any model execution experiment with semantic and structural information related to propaganda techniques uh, and it's um, uh, even increase uh, the accuracy of um, uh, any model. Uh, also I would like to introduce you the work, the recent work um, on the same uh, approach but which was applied on the comments from Twitter uh, in England uh, in English uh, and also author claim that um, uh, if uh, uh, extract different aspect of the data, uh, including the context, uh, uh, entities, re their relationship and external uh, knowledge, uh, and add it as uh, additional layer for classification task, it could improve uh, any uh, model performance. Um, a promising direction for style-based fake news detection is uh, the identification of fine-grained propaganda techniques. This approach allies with the contemporary uh, fake news strategy of blending true and false uh, st statements uh, or manipulating attitudes through writing styles. However, the existing approach have their research gaps. Um, uh, first of all, uh, previous research uh, project was based on the corpora in English and later in Arabic. And they are biased towards their uh, country's culture and political landscape. Um, also, the majority of the existing approach, uh, they rely on the corpora uh, where, uh, where the data um, uh, uh, was gathered, uh, gathered from uh, newspapers, uh, which are structures, uh, structured without mistakes, uh, slangs, uh, new words, etc. It is interesting to uh, see uh, the results, more results on this uh, approach with social network data. Uh, also, this task uh, was uh, uh, ident identification of propaganda techniques were not um, uh, they were not apply uh, on uh, uh, Ukrainian language and also uh, understanding the aim of manipulation techniques and their targets could be the beneficial for uh, manip uh, manipulation detection models. Uh, based on the work by Dereste et al. and Paul et al. Uh, that have studied Russian propaganda strategy and tactics, uh, we have selected uh, four manipulation techniques uh, out of 18 that deliberately saw distrust, confusion, apathy, and polariz polarized opinion in society. Uh, besides uh, the main class, uh, we also have granu granularity of this class. Uh, for, example, the for example, the first class is uh, doubts in Ukraine, and particularly we are interested in doubts in Ukrainian government, Ukrainian army. Ukrainian media, uh, uh, partners help and uh, doubts in uh, other doubts in Ukraine, which include Ukraine history, um, uh, 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 Ukrainian nation, uh, the um, action of the uh, Ukrainian refugees abroad, etc. Uh, the second class is black and white fallacy, uh, which presented two alternative options as the only uh, possible ones when in fact more are um, existing. Uh, the third class is appeal to fear and the four loaded language um, where we are uh, interested uh, in appear to anger, appear to hate and disgust and loaded uh, language and other emotions. Uh, so uh, considering everything above, our problem is to develop an approach that can eff effectively detect 
these four fine-grained manipulation techniques in USEX in social media, considering uh, the unique language uh, feature, Ukrainian context, and uh, uh, deliberately designed Russian information warfare against Ukraine. Uh, our approach to solution is following. First of all, we have to subtask. The first is sentence level classification which spots the specific uh, text fragments containing uh, one of four manipulation technique. And the second one is fragment level classification, uh, when we give a specific span, uh, determine the manipulation technique it uses. Um, in our task, a labeled corpus is essential, uh, so we prepared the data set uh, following three steps, the raw data collection, preparing and sampling uh, the data for annotation and uh, annotation process. Uh, first of all, um, we, uh, we need to gather that data from the um, uh, famous and popular uh, social media uh, by uh, news consumption by Ukrainians uh, based on uh, the survey, uh, USA survey conducted in 2023, it's Telegram. So we gathered uh, the uh, list of public channels on Telegram uh, in the category news and media registered in Ukraine with more than 10,000 subscribers. We have um, uh, 965 channels with 1.6 million posts. Um, uh, over the three months, over the last three months of 2023. We will annotate around uh, 10,000 uh, new posts on the span level uh, to obtain ground truth data. Um, we select posts for annotation in proportion to the number of posts in the channel at random, and 70% of posts are from production channels and 30% from other channels. The list of production channels um, we gathered based on the uh, survey of Telegram uh, propaganda channels uh, conducted by um, uh, fact-checking resource Chesno, a center of countering disinformation and detector media. Uh, to ensure the coherence uh, and consistent annotation, Detailed instructions were written, uh, cover, covering specific requirements for each uh, manipulation technique. Uh, the, um, uh, this instruction contains the definition for each manipulation te technique, the inclusive and exclusive criteria, common nar uh, used narrative, and examples. Uh, we uh, do not need uh, specific knowledge um, from the volunteers. But the basic criteria were that they have uh, citizens, uh, Ukrainian citizenship and proficiency in Ukrainian. The process of working with volunteers are following. First of all, we uh, have the uh, first uh, meeting uh, for introduction and grasp of, of their motivation. Then uh, they uh, receive the instruction and review them and uh, we answer the questions. Uh, after that, they uh, gain the access to their program and start to annotate. And each annotator's first 80 annotator posts uh, are reviewed and feedback is uh, provided within a shared Telegram group that everyone could see them. And two uh, random text uh, per annotator are examined uh, weekly. We use label box program for annotation, and we have 20% overlap of the data uh, to uh, for, uh, for uh, uh, consensus analysis. Also, we would like um, uh, that 5,000 news posts will be prelabored with uh, ChatGPT with GPT-2 uh, to analyze uh, the accuracy or, uh, of the uh, uh, large language model and analyze the speed of the annotator without and with prelabeled data. Uh, we will set several baselines, uh, uh, statistical machine learning model, uh, like simple logistic regression for the first sentence level classification task, and a random selection for one of uh, 10 techniques for the fragment level classification task. And uh, uh, the second uh, baseline for both tasks uh, is uh, GPT-2. Um, we will set uh, the, uh, the, uh, some of the experiments uh, to find the best uh, one for our task. Uh, first of all, it's the simplest one with embedding and RNN, and we focused mostly on transformer-based uh, model because it's the sort of uh, uh, this uh, task. Also, besides that, uh, we experiment with uh, qualitative uh, descriptive elements, which were, were 
proposed by uh, you et al. Uh, and after that, uh, uh, apply uh, the same uh, uh, the same models just to um, to get uh, uh, if uh, the model uh, per performance of the model gets better. Uh, what early results we have? Um, we conducted uh, uh, conducted uh, an initial review of relevant research of our gold. We gathered the data from the telegram. Uh, we selected pro-Russian channels, and we are starting the process of uh, data annotation. The inf instructions were written. Uh, the volunteers were gathered. We have. Uh, 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 now we have uh, uh, around 15 uh, um, annotators working on our task and uh, around uh, 5,000 texts were labeled. Uh, we have uh, limitation and eth ethical implication of our work. First of all, uh, we uh, consider only four manipulation techniques out of 18. Therefore, we will detect either four of the techniques and their granularity or none of them. And uh, it, uh, for the future uh, research, it will be interesting to work uh, with, uh, the, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with an another um, uh, manipulation techniques which we not include in our work. Uh, also, we considered data only from Telegram, but uh, uh, use data from other social networks could have their own pattern or insights of using the manipulation techniques. Um, we chose the list of the Telegram channels tagged by uh, Russian Telegram channel statistic website, TGStat, uh, which may not be uh, complete, but unfortunately it's uh, the only alternative, uh, 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 there is no uh, other alternative uh, for the Telegram statistics. Um, and most importantly is the last point that uh, we do not intend to draw causal inference that all manipulation in the news channel or on Telegram in Ukraine are spread by Russia, as some news channel or people behind uh, them may be spreading the manipulated news due to their beliefs or have their own political agenda. Uh, but either way, it helps Russia to their information war warfare against Ukraine. Many thanks, and I'm ready for your question. Yeah, thank you for your talk. Uh, it's really a cool topic, uh, especially right now. So uh, I have a few questions. The first one is the, did you measure human level, level performance in propaganda detection? Uh, you mean annotators? Yeah, like uh, what's the error for annotators in propaganda? Like uh, what's the variance between the different annotators in terms of propaganda detection? Uh, we have uh, we uh, defined one second twenty percentage of overlap, uh, and uh, the process of annotation is still in the process. And after that, we could uh, uh, analyze the consensus of the annotator. Okay, got it. So basically, uh, it's like the consensus for labelers, but like, what's the top er like top level for the uh, performance? Like, let's say. We are talking about the face recognition topic where we have like one million of faces and we're asking someone to uh, recognize them, categorize them. And in this topic, we have like 80% of uh, machine performance, like for human performance. So basically some annotators are uh, mislabeling something. So here basically it could be the same uh, to understand the top level that we could match. Basically, the, the, the labeling level is the first part. And the second part, uh, uh, from my point of view, propaganda is quite subjective. Like It's not uh, objective uh, in terms of we're focusing on uh, some wordings, some uh, phrases, like uh, how they described in the text, like here. Uh, and if we will apply some kind of adversarial attacks, uh, on top of this text by re rewriting it in some at some point uh such approach could fail what do you think about it or it's it will it will resist uh 
Uh, I think the uh, important is uh, to determine the propaganda and manipulation techniques in text because propaganda is broader term uh -huh. and manipulation techniques actually they are really objective uh, because it's in uh, language in language uh, have so, um, uh, in writing style you could understand that this is manipulated by something for example this uh, probably it's not uh, really clear but here we have the example of um, doubts uh, in uh, Ukrainian uh, government. For example, texts like Reznikov вирішив стати адвокатом, uh, Reznikov з'явився після свого звільнення і вирішив прокоментувати, що він повертається до адвокатури. Цікаво, кого він буде захищати. Okay, got it. This, this uh, phrase, uh, the, the, the statement is uh, true, but this uh, uh, question, to... questions, uh, the, the action uh, of the Okay, got it. Okay, so in this case, it will work. Thank you. More questions? And answering also, I could uh, additional answer to the first one question. I could only compare with um, the uh, this um, uh, work uh, um, via the Spain. Uh, let, let me see. Uh, this uh, span level uh, um, uh, propaganda detection uh, work, uh, they have uh, the 80, also the 80 percentage of uh, agreement uh, among uh, uh, annotator, but uh, it's not uh, uh, like apple to apple comparison because it's, it was in English and we have uh, Ukrainian text. It could have some, I don't know, differences. And also they have uh, uh, text from newspapers which are more clear uh, then uh, we have uh, d data from the social media, yes. Yeah, so maybe just, just to comment or, or rephrase what you have said. So uh, to understand the human level, you don't need a consensus. You, you can do, you can have some volunteers, but just don't give them instruction. Uh, like don't give them uh, like uh, examples. So you give a raw text, and ask them to identify the uh, the manipulation technique, right? So that would be the human, uh, I don't know, upper bound, or not the upper bound, just the human level. And uh, this way you could compare your tool results with what actually human can um, uh, classify. Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, do I have more questions from the back? Uh, one one uh, kind of half joke, half a uh, uh, comment. Uh, like, uh, SBU is going to maybe in the future block Telegram. So do I understand correctly that uh, your techniques should work are not bound are not like bounded to telegram but actually to a text block of text right so you can take any post from any data source but you just took telegram because it was most easiest platform to grab the data right it was it is the most popular platform where ukrainians uh, receive the news Okay. So it was uh, important to take uh, this uh, social me uh, media. But yes, uh, I work only with text, so mm -hmm. it doesn't matter uh, their source. Uh, probably Instagram is not the good example here because uh, the, in Instagram you have uh, more visual co content than uh, text textual representation. Of the data. Thank you. And the jokey part of the answer would be that the statement that SB, SBU is going to uh, terminate Telegram is propaganda. Uh, more questions? Uh, we still have five to seven minutes before the coffee break uh, will be served a little bit with a shift in time. Uh, so, uh, no, 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 no. No, no, please return back. I still have mine. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no way. Uh, we still have to suffer five to seven minutes before the coffee break. So um, feel free to enjoy the podium, I mean. Uh, I could please return back to your slides, sir.
Ven que doy noche. Sorry for not warning in advance. Yeah, just uh, abandoned the ship, yeah? <laughs> okay, it was... Um, uh, yeah, um, uh, but um, uh, I just wanted to see a slide for the context. Anyhow, in your slide number 14, in the last lines, you mentioned an appear to something. Was it a typo? Should it have been appealed to? Okay. Yeah, yeah. In two places. Uh, I also have a question to slide number 25. Twenty-five. Uh, it mentioned in the last bullet topic similarity. And I do wonder how you detect topics. And how do you measure this similarity? It means that uh, uh, usually the news uh, posts have uh, the topic, uh, the, the oh. headline, uh, and then the body of the post. And uh, it is also uh, interesting that uh, uh, because journalists uh, would like uh, okay. to uh, grasp the attention of the audience, uh, sometimes they um, uh, write in the uh, headline more emotional information than in the body itself and also it is uh, uh, could be beneficial to compare the topic uh, in the highlight and uh, in uh, and the topic in the and uh, measure the body. topic the factual yes. topic which is in the text yes. well no. so it might be no, one of the sources of improving the quality of uh, no, of propaganda detection because uh, this labeling is uh, no, well, anyhow, a bit subjective. And there could be bias, at least within this 20% you mentioned. So why not trying to compare this um, labeling similarity to the discovered similarity uh, by text analysis, by topic modeling? That could, uh, could, yes, a good be advice the for, the, uh, for the future work, I believe. This is it? I don't yes. know. Yeah, I have uh, sorry one more question. Uh, yeah, so as I already uh, told you during our master seminars, the instructions you prepared for the lab labors are very nice example of a few shot could be can be a very nice example of a few shot learning. And uh, it seems to me that uh, GPT-2 may be too weak model to to do this. And uh, I just want to, wanted to ask you to give a little bit more context why specifically GPT-2 and maybe are there any models you are considering? Uh, I would like to, uh, to use more advanced uh, GPT model, but... Uh... Uh, do not have resources uh, to 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 use it. Yeah, I think if if it may help you, uh, maybe our faculty can provide a key, uh, API key for you know maybe GPT four or GPT three point five, maybe not for the whole data set, but at least for. Um, some percentage of the some percent of um uh, uh of of samples and this way you can have some maybe some examples labeled with say GPT two GPT three point five GPT four and then could be great to yeah, to, could, to compare the performance but... because like this this may uh, result in much work much more work on your end but on the other hand this is very low hanging fruit you you can uh yeah that's okay. good great thank you still more questions quick questions 
the last minute is almost depleted. So thank you very much. And enjoy your coffee break.